If I were to ask you to name some ancient civilizations, what will come to mind? The Egyptians? The Romans? The Greeks? Or maybe the Celts? These are probably the most spoken about. However, they aren't the only ones that existed. The world back then was incredibly diverse and many civilizations flourished. So today, I would like to shed light on some of those ancient communities that existed thousands of years ago that you may not have heard about. My Moors video did really well, so I would like to talk more about history, especially the stuff that isn't known by the general public. Today, I am going to focus on ancient civilizations because it's one of those topics that isn't as spoken about outside the popular ones. There are many reasons as to why they aren't as known about, and that's mainly due to a lack of artifacts, language barriers, and natural disasters. Despite this, what we do know is incredibly interesting, so I can't wait to share it with you. Number five, the Beaker people. The Beaker civilization existed in many parts of Europe, but they have since become famous for being some of the first inhabitants in Britain. They seemingly migrated to the island 4,500 years ago, during the Bronze Age, and they replaced the British Neolithic people who have been there since the Ice Age. Evidence suggests that after the Beaker people migrated, the existing population mostly died out, probably due to the diseases brought by the migrants. The Beaker people were known for their pottery production, mines and burial methods. They were also responsible for the first woven garments and alcoholic drinks in Britain. And since this was the Bronze Age, they were metalsmiths, working with copper, gold and bronze. Evidence also shows that the Beaker people further developed on Stonehenge, which may suggest that they adopted the religion of the Neolithic people. When the Iron Age came into fruition, the Beaker people came to be known as the Celts, and they are pretty famous for their feud with the Roman Empire. Number four, the Minoans. I'm named after the mythical King Minos, the Minoans were another civilization that flourished during the Bronze Age. Based on the island of Crete, the Minoans were expert sailors, architects and farmers. Even though they had a relatively small community compared to their peers, they were incredibly wealthy. The Minoans amassed this fortune by trading with other nations such as the Egyptians who in fact grew very fond of them and named the Crete natives the Sea People. They exported wine, currants, olive oil, wool, cloth, herbs and purple dye. They also traded exquisite stones, copper, tin, ivory, silver and gold. Minoan infrastructure was also incredibly advanced. Palaces were several stories tall with thousands of rooms with running water and plumbing. All buildings, including the most simplest of homes, were intricately decorated with unique patterns and paintings. Furthermore, women seemed to be of a higher social status compared to those of other civilizations. In art, they were depicted as being leaders and goddesses. They even took part in traditionally male sports, such as bullfighting. Minoan fashion was also very unique. Men hardly wore any clothing, whilst women dressed more modestly apart from the breast area, which was left exposed. There's also little to no evidence of a Minoan army, which implies that this was a very peaceful nation with minimal conflict. Although this was an incredibly successful civilization, it was unfortunately ended by volcanic eruption in the Santorini Islands. Many years later, the Greeks took ownership of the islands and they created several myths surrounding it, such as Theseus and the Minotaur. Number three, the Kush Empire. More commonly known as the Nubians, this civilization was one of the most successful in ancient Africa. They were based just south of ancient Egypt along the river Nile, in an area we now call Sudan. The Nubians had very close ties to the Egyptians. They shared the same culture, religion, government systems. They also built pyramids and mummified the dead. The main difference was that where the Egyptians were more of a mixed society, the Nubians were mostly dark skinned. One of the most notable things about the Nubians is the amount of pyramids they built. Over 200 were constructed, which is far more than what the Egyptians built. These structures were smaller in size, 
but they are no less detailed. The most important resources to the Nubians were gold and iron. They used these metals to gather a large amount of wealth. Men and women also seemed to be equal in this society as both could become leaders. And aside from leaders and priests, farmers were the most respected in the community as they provided food for the nation. During the 25th dynasty of Egypt, the Nubians managed to conquer the whole country, making them one of the first people to take control over the kingdom. This was hundreds of years before the Greeks even established their rule over there. Many of the most renowned pharaohs in Egypt were of Nubian origin, such as Tahaka, Shabaka and Tantamani. Zipporah, the wife of Prophet Moses, is probably the most well-known Nubian. The Kush Empire lasted until Christianity took over in the 6th century AD, and now it's a Muslim-majority country. Number 2. The Indus Valley Civilization the Indus Valley Civilization was a humongous community which spans half a million square miles, covering parts of modern day India and Pakistan. It's also one of the newer discoveries on this list, being that it was uncovered by archaeologists in the 1920s. Despite being around over 5,000 years ago, they were one of the most advanced civilizations of the time. Over 1,500 cities were built, each had wells, drains, sewers, and even public bins. Okay, I get that might sound a bit mundane, but they also had a scheme where rubbish would be collected daily. This was a clean and cultivated society. They were also incredibly smart. They developed a system where they could accurately measure mass, time and length. These people are also believed to be some of the world's oldest dentists. And if that wasn't enough, they may have created the world's first dice and buttons. Their most frequent trading partners were the people of ancient Mesopotamia. They would trade crops such as grapes, dates, melons, mustard, peas and other types of grains in exchange for cotton, metals and exotic animals. One of the aspects that separates the Indus Valley civilization from others is that they had no religion, monarchy or military force. Many consider this civilization to be an ancient utopia. The people of the Indus Valley civilization could also read and write. Many pieces of writing have been uncovered, but most of it is unreadable since there's no way to translate it. And unfortunately, we don't know how this civilization came to an end. It's still shrouded in mystery. There are some theories that say that it may have been due to mass flooding or an invasion, but there's not enough concrete evidence. Number one, the Gowanches. The Gowanches were the indigenous people of the Canary Islands. They were the first inhabitants of the archipelago until the Spanish conquest in the 15th century. The Canary Islands are an archipelago off the west coast of Africa. But despite being located there, it's a Spanish territory. The Gowanches most likely arrived on the islands in the 1st or 2nd century BC from North Africa. Some people have linked them with the ancient Egyptians as both civilizations mummified the dead and built pyramids. Remnants of pyramids can even be found on the islands of Tenerife. Even though they were clearly competent at building complex structures, they chose to mainly reside in caves as it was cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Historians believe that due to their isolation from the outside world, most of their practices are akin to those of the Stone Age. They were a tribal society that relied on hunting, gathering and farming. Their diet mainly consisted of pork, milk, goat and several fruits. Each island also had their own religion that differed slightly from each other. However, the one belief they did have in common was the belief in one eternal being that was represented by this pottery idol. There was a hierarchy with kings, nobles, squires and the commoners. If a man wanted to become acknowledged as a nobleman, he would have to be investigated to see if he had milked and slaughtered animals, cooked meals and if he had been disrespectful or rude, especially to women. Some even claim that the first inhabitants of the Canary Islands were originally Atlanteans and that the Canary Islands used to be the summits of the underwater city Atlantis. Divorces were allowed in this society and both parties were free to marry again if they had no children. Fiestas, public banquets and wrestling matches were common across all islands. They were also admired by foreigners for being strong, nimble, courageous, intelligent, 
dignified, friendly and humble. Their rosy skin, blonde hair and blue eyes also attracted many. After the Spanish took occupation of the islands, the Guanches ceased to exist. Just like the Native Americans and the Aztecs, many died from diseases, war and famine, and others ended up marrying into Spanish families. Although the Guanches don't exist as a race anymore, some of their traditions are present among the locals of the islands. So these were some ancient civilizations that I don't really hear people talk about. Did you know about any of them? Do you think I could have included any more? And have you liked, shared and subscribed? Come on, it ain't going anywhere. Have a great day. Goodbye.